Uh, he'll still make his way up here. I'm going to give an extraordinary brief introduction because I want him to talk, and I want we want to have time for that. I said, we, we told Dr. McCann, we said, hey, take 15 or 20 minutes. You can use more, you can use less. We're, we're easy here. Right, we, we won't run a time or anything like that. You're, you're our guest, you'll do that, but you're here. And we applaud you for agreeing to be here. We know that then when you got the invite, you asked some folks, you said, what about this Republican member guy? Fortunately, you asked the right people. I said, yeah, go talk to them. Right? And you read what we're all about. You said, hey, because he told me when I uh, first uh, met him for the first time face to face uh, earlier this evening, he goes, hey, you stole all my talking points. Uh, and what he was talking about was the things that we put out in our part about what we're all about. I says, well, that bodes well for you, Dr. McCann. If <laughs> nothing you say and do, uh, you'll really make some money. Uh, this is the invite that went out, and it's still pending. Uh, the, the city county commissioner uh, in District 5, which is Lake, Lakewood Ranch, plus a little bit more, but largely what Lakewood Ranch, he was given an invitation. We sent out, uh, they, he did not decline the invitation, he didn't respond. He did not acknowledge the invitation. So he's still pending. He shows up, he's still talking. We, we'll look, we look forward, we'll continue to invite him. He's got from now until June before we decide to endorse. He can, he can, he can make the case, right? Otherwise, we'll just judge him on the voting record and then other forms that he may, may choose to show up at. So he's still petty. Uh, Ray Turner, as you know, was appointed by the governor because it lasted, uh, a year, about a year ago, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, Vanessa Baum uh, had resigned her position because of issues to, to do with the health issues with her husband and all she had to, uh, somebody want to jiggle something right there? Uh, no, leave it off. No, she closed, close, how about she closed that? Because that, that's it? That's really it. All right, because uh, Vanessa Ball had to resign, uh, and of course the governor, of course the governor relies on inputs locally and others from that end. You, 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 know, you know how it operates. Uh, but uh, Governor Sanders appointed him, he's filled that out. He will have had close to a year, uh, but he's decided to run uh, to have the, the voters of Manti County, the Republican voters of Manti County, uh, to choose whether he should uh, continue on as uh, the District 5 County Commissioner uh, uh, after uh, November. Okay, Dr. McCann, and I'm reading from the press release that he had back on the 1st of December of last year, 2023. I, I posted this, and we made it available to you as well. I, every once in a while, and something that's happened, the, 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 the Tribune actually puts out some useful information from time to time. And when they go on to some crazy conclusions about what they're seeing, and then I kind of part ways with them. But one of the things that they do is they ask six questions of the candidates, of, of any party they're running for local office. And so they did, last week, they did six questions with Dr. McCann. And so Masper, the reporter that put down the Tribune, did that. I, it's Bradenton Journal. There. Bradenton Journal. This is Nick. It's Bradenton uh, Journal. The, the Bradenton Journal. I'm sorry. I, yeah, Tribune Journal, all that. It used to be main. I, I used to cite the Manti Herald, but yeah, I don't even mention them anymore. Until I, don't, I will not mention them again. The Manti Herald. All right. But uh, they did it six questions. But Master was the guy that wrote that up. And he does that for all the cancer running. It's very useful, useful information. Uh, and it kind of reiterated what he had here, but it goes into the detail right there. So, uh, very briefly, he's running for District 5. He announced on December 1st, he's, the, he's a devoted public servant. And he's a physician, a doctor. He's a lawyer, a business executive, educator, educator. And he's a U.S. Navy veteran. And he announced his candidate then. I, I, my head is already swimming at, at, at that. Uh, if there's any number of things that you would qualify for just on the basis of that. I, I, and he stated in his announcement, right, I'm going to read just the stuff he said up front because if you said it up front, it's most important. The power and authority of the government originates with the people, Dr. McCann says, and that's what he said. And, there, and, he, and he, had, he came up with a mission statement. And I'm just going to give the lead off bold print for his, the four points of his mission statement. Number one, he wants a transparent and accountable leadership for change. Number two, he wants community centered governance. Number three, economic development. He can talk about what he means in each when he gets up top, or he can answer your question. And number four, environmental stewardship. Did I get all four of them? All right, Dr. McCann, without further ado, the mic is yours. Thank you. 
and you can you can sit, stand, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Bob McCann. I'm running for County Commission District Five. I didn't expect tonight for the other people not to show up. Uh, so I actually prepared a lot based on that. <laughs> but I think what's more important now is that you get to know me a little bit. I have a website out at letbobmcgann.com. I put a lot of information on that website. And, you know, I think it's very important that we understand. Again, he did steal my thunder. You know, individual rights. But the other thing we need is quiet enjoyment of our home. We need to stop the urban sprawl. What's happening is we're overbuilding, we're rezoning, we're taking away agriculture, we're taking away all of the cattle, cattle ranches. We're, you know, it, it's become a, a, I said a joke the other day. The joke was, you know, thank you for inviting me to Lakewood. I would have said Lakewood Ranch, but I can't find anyone there. <laughs> it took me a little longer to get here than it normally does, because, but I did get here in a roundabout way. <laughs> I heard somebody asked about insurance earlier, and we do have an insurance crisis here. Uh, as far as the auto insurance goes, I called up State Farm in Illinois. They said, Right now, you're being overcrowded, overbuilt. You're putting overpasses in there. The accidents are up. The accidents are more serious than they normally are. And that's why your insurance premium doubled. I've had them since I was age 16. And I don't have tickets. I don't have you know any driving record, no wrecks. And my insurance doubled, all because they're building. There was a study that came out today from the University of Florida that says that the water levels are rising around Florida and we're overbuilding so much that the agriculture industry in Florida, which is very important, is not going to be here by 2070. You know, that's a scary thing. One of the things that I have a problem with, you know, my opponent didn't show up and the thing is that, you know, his, he has the same out-of-town consultants that the other commissioners have. He has the same treasurer, which is kept in Pinellas County. Everything I'm doing here is done in Manatee County. I've lived here for 18 years. I've watched the growth, I've watched the growth. And again, the thing that we have to do right now is we have to realize that we need less government. And we need the people to be the government. The county commissioners don't listen. And, you know, when you go to see them, they don't show. That's kind of a shame. So, as far as my consultants go, here they are. I want to listen to you. I want to hear from you. I gave you my personal email on my website. I think it's very important that when you get to me, you know, that I answer you in a timely fashion. Now, I understand that, you know, there has been some problems with my email. Uh, so, I'll give you my personal email also. It's rkmccann at verizon.net. When you do look at my website, you're going to see a picture of me at age two standing out in front of St. Michael's Cathedral. And you're going to see something that my mother wrote on the back of that picture in 1959. You know, it was just her thoughts at that time. What she said was, a future doctor, lawyer, or mayor, time will tell. I have two out of them right now. We're going to change the mayor to commissioner. As far as Republicans go, I'm glad you're the captain for the Republican Party. I want to read something here. I think this is very important for everybody to know. This was a Republican that ran for office. He ran for state house, and now he works with builders. If people do not pay attention to politics, which is the way we govern ourselves, the powerful will take over and individual liberties will be lost. The founding fathers envisioned citizens becoming legislators, not career politicians. 
I believe the Republican Party has drifted from traditional Republican value, fiscal restraint and responsibility, limited government, personal responsibility, and ensuring individual liberty. It's too much about money and power and privilege and less about individual freedom. A true enterprise system not favoring the companies through legislation is what we need to restore and stop cronyism and corporate welfare. He also talks about the money being the most important thing that candidates are judged by. What we need to do is we need, we need to make your vote count more than contribution. Uh, I am a commercial pilot also, and I was an FAA designated examiner. And you know, it's, when people apply to the airlines, they come in and they say, you know, I've got 20,000 hours. Well, what they have is a lot of flight instructing out at the airport, and they have one hour 20,000 times. <laughs> if you start looking at the <clears throat> candidates' funding, you're going to find out that they come from the PACs, you know, the Builders Association. They come from bundlers that are, you know, again, Pat Neal, Carlos Piro. And the thing is, I'm not going to take that money. I don't want that money. I changed my website. I see a lot of websites that say, get involved. That's a nice thing. My website says, vote. I want your vote. I don't want your money. I want your vote. How many people here are from District 5? Okay, how many people are from outside District 5? You cannot vote for me, but my vote on the commission affects you. I vote for everything that happens in the county. So, whether you're in my district or not, I want to hear from you before the vote. We want to post that agenda. I want to hear how you want me to vote because this is public service. This is not a power position. This is, you know, the government is not here to tell you what to do. You tell the government what's going to be best for your welfare. The other thing is we need a limited government. We need the government to stop catering to certain people, rezoning the land, getting rid of wetlands, which are our protection. You know, we have a water shortage here already. The wetlands are a very important thing. I wrote about that on my website, so I won't bore you with that now. But the thing is that, you know, we need those buffers. You know, I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm a little older than most candidates, obviously. Uh, District 5, we're going to be putting up affordable housing. Okay, that affordable housing is going to be on Lena Road. They need to do a study to make sure that since it's built right on 75, that it's not too loud. They'll have to build a sound barrier wall, and they'll have to put in thicker windows. What they didn't address at the county commission is the fact that there's a landfill there. That's a health hazard, number one. And number two, it reminds me of a sitcom I used to watch called How I Met Your Mother. In that, Marshall and Lily wanted to go buy an apartment and they went to a place called, I want to get it correct, Dowistopia is the name of it. Okay, they went there, they had a very bad smell because of the wind, and they said, why do we have that bad smell here? And the guy said, well, you're in Dowistopia. They didn't know what that meant. That meant downwind from the sewage treatment plant. <laughs> so the thing is that, you know, I don't know what we're going to build over there as far as affordable housing. We do need affordable housing in Manatee County. There's other ways to do that. I discussed that in my question and on my website. But the idea that you're going to build something next to a dump, I mean, you know, what are they going to call it? The lean, you know, lean luxury, uh, you know, land? Doesn't make sense to me. We really need to do better planning. The water leaf community that we have over there, they're going to build a community next to that. When they build that community, it's going to be four inches higher than water leaf. So, when it rains or floods, where do you think the water is going to go? Water leaves. Obviously, we need to do more discussion with the people that live here 
because they're the ones that have the property rights. I've heard in the past that you know everybody down here deserves a house. Anybody coming from where they're coming from deserves to have a house. That's not true. They have a right to acquire the property. They don't get the property rights until they actually acquire it. So again, you know, I was hoping that you know I would have other people to talk with here so that we could ask them questions. But since they didn't show up today, that's okay. You know, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have, but I, I want to borrow from one more thing, you know, from NCIS. I watch that because obviously I'm former Navy. Uh, as far as Republican goes, so that you know, I'm a member of the Republican National Lawyers Association. I'm also a member of the Federalist Society. Okay. I think it's important that, you know, you realize that they said it, and I'm going to paraphrase it, and I'm going to add a little word to it. You know, in a county full of problems, be the solution. And that's what I believe we need to be. And the only way we're going to do that is ask you, what makes it better for you? What allows you to have the quiet enjoyment of your home? You know, what allows you to, you know, not go through all the roundabouts? One of the jokes that I did say too is, you know, I want to put two roundabouts together to see who got stuck in the figure eight. <laughs> we have a roundabout over in Cooper Creek. And that roundabout, you know, you have a shopping center and restaurants. You have a health club. You have another shopping center coming out of there. And nobody knows how to drive through that roundabout. It's not a single lane. It's a multiple lane roundabout. And the way that people come in there, you know, it's uh, one car comes through and obviously, you know, they don't teach us how to do this in driver's ed when I was there, we didn't have circles. You know, if you drove in a circle, that means that you probably would have a police officer following you. <laughs> so the thing is that when people come in, you know, you're supposed to yield to the person on the left. However, what happens is a whole string of cars on the left comes through there, and they don't let one car come through at a time. So it's a very dangerous thing. They're going to build 10 more roundabouts out near 675. I can't wait to see an orange truck come out of Arcadia, go through that roundabout, and, you know, spill the orange. You know, they obviously have to drive down here to Tropicana, and, you know, how many roundabouts can you go through? You know, the first meeting I had with somebody, you know, to, to talk about my candidacy, I went from my house to the UTC mall. That wasn't here when I first moved here. Normally, that would take 10 minutes from where I live in the River Club. But the thing is that it took me 35 minutes to get to the yard house from my house on the Lena Road that they're talking about building. Lena Road comes out right before the diamond on State Route 70. And all they're gonna do is add to the traffic and rush hour. And they're gonna make the roads more dangerous and our insurance is gonna go up. We have to stop that. We have to plan the building. When I first moved here, they said that they had a 20 year plan for Lakewood Ranch. That plan has been amended so many times and the boundaries have been moved so many times that there's no longer a plan. So what we need to do is we need to have a reform and responsive commission. And you know, I'm pledging to you right now that that's exactly what I'll do. And, but I need your help to do it, obviously. If you don't live in District 5 and you know people that do, please spread the word. It's very important that Manatee County becomes the beauty it used to be with the safety and the wetlands that used to be there because obviously making wetlands you know, uh, artificially is not nearly as good as the natural beauty that we have. You know, again, showing my age, I know what's happening out on the islands. They want to build a parking lot, Holmes Beach. I've already talked to the people there. You know, this reminds me of a Joni Mitchell song. We paved paradise and put up a park. We need to stop that. 
And again, it's us that can do it. I am a Republican. I am a Navy veteran. And I believe I'm the only veteran running in the race. And I think what we need to do is work together so that we can control the commission rather than the commission tell us how we're going to live. We have to take any questions. Hold on. If you you're, you're gonna no, you hold on to it. Okay. Uh, you're gonna have to work a little bit. You're not gonna stay from where you're at. You're gonna work to ask questions. You're gonna come up here. Okay. Right, so you might as well start working. Come around this way, back behind balls. And you'll take here and you'll do here. One, because we want to catch you asking a question. We want to hear it here, but it's not just for your benefits, for the benefit of everybody else. You know, the only the only there's only one word that would improve your resume. <laughs> You said you're a Navy veteran. If you could have said Army veteran, no. <laughs> I, I, I would be. I, if maybe it'd be Army this year, I'd, I'd probably be a little bit more celebratory. I'm feeling kind of pumped up and proud right now. I, no, I'm kidding. All right, here you go. Okay, I got ten. My name is Mark Sank, and I'm, I'm also running for uh, a position. School Board <laughs> District 1. So first I want to, because I know what it is to, uh, to, uh, to jump into a campaign, I first want to thank you for running. I mean, you know, people, people do that voluntarily, and they know what the kind of commitment they take. I'm very impressed with your credentials, too, by the way. I'd love to get to know you a little bit better. But I do have a question, because there are two things that you stand for that at least appear to me to be at odds. Okay. You're, you're for limited government. Fantastic. So am I. But you're also for environmental stewardship. And if, how would you? How can you reconcile limited government with environmental stewardship? I mean, doesn't it take resources to guarantee? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? That's what I'm trying to get. At. If we would have left the natural wetlands alone, no, it wouldn't take any money whatsoever. Hey, all right. Behind my house, I have deer walking, which I. You know, my wife gets up and she looks and she says, this is wonderful. I think that's a fantastic thing too. But when the coyote's chasing them, I don't think it's so great. Okay, what we did by taking away those wetlands, which were there for 30 years, you know, that was not a taking. That was not eminent domain. That was not anything, you know, as the commissioners tried to put it. So if we would have left those natural wetlands alone, or if we were to put them back where they were in the first place, then we wouldn't be displacing wildlife. You know, we would have a natural system to keep the aquifer fresh. We would keep the bacteria out of the water. We would be able to absorb the floods. These are things that we need to do. You know, that's why I said a minute ago, you know, building artificial stuff costs money, and it's not nearly as good as what's there. If you're asking, so, so, so your idea then, so, yeah, it's great. It, leave well enough alone and let nature take its course and don't worry about hiring more bureaucrats to manage the board. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And on top of that, what's really important is the government shouldn't even be involved in that. That's a public health and safety issue and it's natural. Fantastic. Thanks so much. Thank you. Dr. McCann, I'm very Sam. I'm one of your future constituents, District 5. Uh, one of the major issues in my community, which is Del Webb, we're close to the uh, FDA being the future development area boundary. Uh, there has been at least five developments that the County Commission has already approved east of the boundary line. 12,000 houses. Uh, FDOT has said that the uh, roads cannot handle, the infrastructure cannot handle that kind of development. Swift Mud, which is the Southwest Florida Water Management District, has also said that uh, there's a pending crisis in terms of availability of water. Uh, your opponent, uh, the absent Ray Turner, has his, his, his um, solution is that we have a great utilities department that can build pipes the pipes out there supply water. Two part question. Um, what will your position be when a mega builder comes and says to you, I want to build you know a thousand houses, two thousand houses, whatever, east of the boundary line? 
For example, bacon dairy is up for sale. Uh, the owners of bacon dairy wish to remain, sell it to someone that remains in the dairy business. However, who knows? What would be your overall position in terms of allowing rezoning east of the boundary line just because the developers come in and say, hey, we bought the land and now we want you to rezone from agriculture or residential and for high debt. Um, so that's a concern for all of us in, in East County because of the overbuild. I've been invited to Bacon Dairy so that I can listen to what they're talking about. Uh, and again, I've already talked with some people out past that boundary line. You know, everybody needs boundaries. I wrote that on my website. You know, unfortunately, many of the developers here didn't have coloring books as children, don't know how to stay within the line. That line is there for a purpose. Yep. And that purpose is that we cannot get the necessary utilities out there. We heard, you know, my opponent say that we have a great utilities department. But again, he didn't say who was gonna pay for that. He didn't talk about that. So normally the developers pay for something. You know, they'll, they'll probably try to put a CDD in there so they can pass the cost on to the, the homeowners, which is a bad thing. You know, that's just another form of the You know, I don't believe they should be building past the boundary line. So you would, you would tell them, no, we would say, hey, you have a right to acquire property, but you but people don't have a right to a home that your opponent has steadfastly uh, stated on many occasions. Did I, did I hear you correctly? That's correct. Again, the thing is that, you know, if they bought the land, you know, with the idea that it was going to be resolved, then obviously they are taking things for granted that right. it can happen. You know, any rezoning that's done should be done in a constant separate and talking with the people that it's going to affect. And on top of that, you have to look at, you know, how much is it going to cost? Can you get the utilities there? And again, what are you taking away when you're rezoning that land? So the thing is that, you know, I don't think the dairy should be rezoned at all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, Dr. McCann. Um, I'm Sally Palmino. I am newer to the county and I come from 51. So, um, don't forget to vote for it. Oh, no, don't worry about that. Okay. Closer. Closer? Okay. Um, I'm a retired medical professional also. Come from that industry for years, 50 years. And, and if you are elected to the board, I believe that she'll be the only city position on the board. And so my question is directly to you in that aspect. Being a city position, I believe the board will listen to your counsel should we go back into a pandemic type situation. So I would like to know where you stand on vaccine mandates, how you feel about that, um, and personal freedom, medical freedom, and mask mandates. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Good question. I'm glad you asked that question. Again, the first thing I started out with was individual rights. Okay. I don't believe in mandates on anything. It's not the government's job to tell you how to live and take care of yourself. Now, I will tell you I'm a dinosaur as a physician. I've been a doctor for 34 years. Good. Okay. And back at the time that I was a doctor, it was a doctor-patient relationship. It didn't have anything to do with government intervention. It didn't have anything to do with insurance intervention. You know, we didn't need to get permission to treat a patient. Okay. Since then, it has become more of a consumer type. So I'm actually your healthcare consultant. I can recommend something and you can say no. Back when I was a doctor, there was no such thing as a DNR. There was no such thing as limiting your medical care. We did everything we can to save everybody whether it was futile or not, because it wasn't our, deter our determination as to whether you would live. That's up to God. Yep. Okay. Oh, right answer. Do you still practice? No, I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Dr. McCann. I'm a retired Army officer. I won't hold that again. <laughs> In Manatee County, when they do projects, they don't tell you about it, violate the law of land activity. And a lot of uh, what's going on in the board, they don't care that they do that. 
What is your answer to that? And would you tell the public work to actually obey the law and go through the land acquisition properly? Not only should that happen, but again, you know, uh, I heard, you know, my opponents say that, you know, they don't feel that the builders are building using enough pipe correctly. Uh, they need to use a larger pipe. So the county would take that over away from the builders. And it's like, why don't you hold the builders to a code? Why would you want to put that cost onto a taxpayer? Absolutely not. The problem we have here right now is special interest control the county and they control the county board. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have the Builders Association, you have the the board that actually sits down and plans these things and makes recommendations to the commission who ultimately, ultimately makes the decision. They're all the same people and my opponents get on all of them. Impressed with your resume, Glenn Jablina, for the record. Thank you so much. A uh, couple questions. Um, and by the way, I went to Honor Flight with my daughter there, and it made me bet that we went to all the memorials. Uh, very nice. So thank you. So uh, my, my question is that um, I go to meetings every now and then. Those who know me, I, I, I participate. Hold the microphone closer. Can you hear me now? <laughs> we can't hear all right, so so my question is, you've been here 12 years, you've already explained part of the, and by the way, Ray, thanks for not showing up, this guy's a disaster. He will not get one vote while he's not for the center. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have a picture at the county commission where his seat is empty there on the vote on the wetland, but preliminarily, and when he was on the, the board for zoning, he actually recommended that we get rid of the wetland. Yeah, he was on planning, he was a disaster. He, yeah. he was appointed on the affordable housing board, which I'm on. He never showed up, so I get his track record. He has not. Uh, but, more, but more importantly, you've been here 12 years. You know the traffic problems. 18. 18, okay. I asked all, all candidates, I'm not picking on you. That's okay. If I go back and I look at all the agendas, one, how many of you showed up to actual Board of County Commissioner meetings and addressed your concerns? And if you couldn't show up, how many public comments have you written into the board about that agenda item that you disagree with? My answer will be none. Okay. Because I did not see any reason to try to fight with the people that were already in charge. You know, unfortunately, I've heard, I haven't verified, that the county commissioners actually get a text at the meeting on how to vote. They do. Okay, I also know that they have the Christmas parties at Carlos Bureau. Okay, you know, I also, I know Pat Neal. You know, I want to disclose it to you now because it's going to come out. I applied for this position when they put out the applications from the governor's office. Okay, Governor DeSantis didn't make this decision. This decision was made, you know, by, by a call from Bill Galvano to the governor's office. <clears throat> okay, I know that because on, on my application, I actually put in somebody, I asked, could I use your name? Since I've been talking to you and you've been my friend. And his name was Dane Thorlison. He was DeSantis' commanding officer, Navy SEAL, in Iraq. Okay, I know DeSantis didn't even see my application. I'm going to give you an honorary membership to the Gad Flight community, okay? <laughs> Thank you for being here. You got my vote. I can't vote for you, you unless I move out there, but I'll support you any way I can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tell them what you're doing. Uh, anybody else have, have a question for Dr. McCann? Anything you want to say? Oh, you got one. Do you have some petitions that you can pass around? To I didn't bring that many tonight. Okay. I, when it, if you got District 5 people here, they should take a stack of them. Not a county commissioner issue, but, you know, again, you know, it was brought up earlier. I am a uh, lifetime member of the NRA. All right.
that's a great organization, as am I. Uh, but Gun Owners of America is even more stalwart for the Second Amendment than NRA. That's a that's a good one to join. And sometimes the NRA gets a little bit flaky. Gun Owners of America do not. The other thing I want to disclose is I did run for state rep before I ran against the sheriff's son. And when I ran against the sheriff's son, you know, obviously it was not a smart thing to do. But he had a better story than I had at the time. I was talking about national levels. I was talking about, you know, the, the pending opiate crisis that was coming down here. The fact that we were called the Oxycontin Express. I was actually appointed by the governor to be on a, a joint federal state task force for, for the opiates. Uh, I was part of the uh, contract board because I was chairman of the osteopathic board here. And we, we actually wrote the uh, the mechanism in order to have doctors check to see if people were doctor shopping. The problem is that, again, that's government intervention at the best. So what we did was we regulated doctors and we left patients in pain, and then they turned around and went with fentanyl and other drugs. So, you know, sometimes you gotta look farther down the road than, than just to make those decisions. But his story, and I have to tell you, this story was very good. He talked about a three-pronged chair, a stool, and he sat on the stool. He said one prong of that is to get good jobs for people. High-paying jobs. We need to attract businesses to this area. The second thing that he said on there was that, you know, it's very important to make sure that people are heard in the government. The third thing he said was agriculture. He said agriculture is a very important business. He talked specifically about East County, and he said that they have a plan over there that is gonna preserve the agriculture, it's gonna preserve the dairy farms, it's gonna preserve you know, the citrus farms. And you know that was his platform when he ran against me. He talked about local issues, but again, he has a degree in animal science and agriculture. That's his undergraduate degree. He's a lawyer now and a congressman. But the thing is that, you know, when he said that, you know, that's one of the reasons why I came back into the race now at this time. And I've been pretty much absent, I'll tell you, because I watched what the builders are doing, I watched how they did it, and I watched how the PACs and how all the money just, you know, overran everybody. But the thing is, to listen to what he said about the agriculture, preserving the wetlands, preserving the East County, and preserving Florida's natural beauty is something that we really, really need to bring back. And, you know, he's now, Burn Buchanan moved because they didn't want to run against him. Okay, and I will tell you that he's the congressman just south of here in Sarasota. He actually just set up an agriculture committee. So the thing is that, you know, I want to disclose everything up front so that everybody knows who I am, what I did, what my education is, and you know, at any time, anybody wants to get a hold of me, please feel free. I will answer your emails. 